My name is Jesse Jennings and welcome to Let's Paint Live, our monthly painting party where I teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. Um, so tonight is one of my favorite Let's Paint Lives of the year. It is our December edition, so we have a tradition here at Plaid of painting Christmas ornaments. So tonight I'll be showing you how to paint these really pretty winter florals. They're a little different than the Christmas ornaments we've done in the past, a little less traditional, but really fun to do. So you can do these on ornaments or on a canvas. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna show you all the elements that I painted here um, so you can go ahead and create this project at home. We also have Dylan Estes in the studio tonight, so he'll be moderating our chat. So if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and put them um, right below in the chat and he will relay them to me if they're questions so I can help you uh, answer them so you can do this project. I will go ahead now and let you know all the supplies I'll be using. So I have these really nice paper mache balls. They're awesome for crafting. They take paint super well. So these are three inches um, and they come with a string. I got these at Hobby Lobby, but if you have styrofoam balls, um, that's great too. If you have paper mache balls with no string, you can hot glue a ribbon on later, no big deal. Um, you can also use glass bulbs if you have those instead, because those are very common, the plastic ones too. I would recommend um, doing a base coat of black multi-surface paint just to help grab our regular acrylic paint here tonight if you're using something that with a slick surface, but these um, paper mache ones are really great for painting. Also, as always, I have our Let's Paint Live kit. So if you haven't heard our Let's Paint Live kit, um, you can purchase it on platonline.com or on amazon.com, um, and it comes in 24 colors, and with that kit, you can paint any of our Let's Paint Live classes. So we have like I think 50 classes now, 50 plus classes now on our website. So you can go to platonline.com and check out all of our past classes. You can also go to our YouTube channel, Plaid Crafts, and find those. But with our Let's Paint Live kit, like I said, you can paint any of those classes. So it's a great investment. It's also an excellent Christmas present. So if you have somebody you know who likes to paint or is interested in learning to paint, that is an excellent gift for them because they can paint any of our free online classes with that kit. Um, so, like I said, of course, we'll be using only paints from our Let's Paint Live kit, and the specific colors I have here tonight are Aqua, Classic Green, Daffodil Yellow, Baby Pink, Apple Red, Wicker White, and Licorice. And then we'll also be using a little bit of Treasure Gold. So, Treasure Gold is another um, awesome folk art paint. It is the shiniest acrylic paint you'll ever use. It's water-based and non-toxic, and it is just the absolute, absolute most metallic paint I've ever used that's um, water-based and non-toxic. So the color I have tonight is rose gold. And then I have some brushes too. So if you have that Let's Paint Live kit, your variety brush set that is included, will have all the brushes you need for this project. But specifically, if you don't have that kit, I'll be using a one inch flat brush, a half inch flat brush, and then a number five round brush. So if you don't have these exact brushes, don't sweat it. Anything that looks similar to these will work perfectly fine for this project. Okay, I also have my palette paper just for putting my paints on, my paper towels, and my water basin for cleaning my brushes. And then I also have a hair dryer too. So I often have a hair dryer for these classes just to kind of help us move along a little quicker so you guys don't have to wait for dry time at home to make sure we can paint our project in an hour. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information, guys. So are there any questions, Dylan, before we get started? No, we've got a bunch of people joining us. I think they're really excited to start painting. Awesome. Yeah. All right, you guys. So of course, the first thing you could probably tell by the final project, the first thing we're gonna do is gonna start base coating our ornaments with our black. So I'm gonna grab my licorice. If you don't have uh, licorice at home, any black will do. Put about a quarter size amount on my palette paper. I'm going to grab my largest brush just to make the job a little quicker, my one inch flat, and I'm going to load my brush, and I'm just going to start base coating my um, paper mache ornaments. So it should be really quick because paper mache um, is absorbent, it is a porous material, so it takes acrylic paint really well, just like paper, obviously, because it's paper mache. Um, so one nice even coat, you don't need a lot of paint, just enough to cover the surface should do the trick. We should definitely be able to get away with just one coat on these ornaments. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to base coat these. It'll just take a few minutes. So feel free, guys, let us know in the chat where you are watching from. If you are painting along tonight, um, if this is your first Let's Paint Live, we would love to hear from you guys. You can see here, too, I have this like fancy little hook. Um, but if you don't have that at home, it's just like a little ornament hanger. Um, you can get this at the craft store, especially this time of year, but if you don't have that, you can use um, like an egg crate, like an egg carton, I mean, 
Um, that's great for setting your ornaments in, in between coats and in between drying times. Um, another great option, but I mean, even if you have, to have a protected workspace, they shouldn't get too you know, messy if, they, if you just set them gently. Um, another thing you could do is put three um, push pins in the bottom so it kind of has legs to stand on in between uh, your painting. That's another thing you can do. That will make it nice and easy and mess free. We've got people joining us from Oklahoma, Tennessee, oh. Ontario, New Zealand. Wow, <laughs> welcome guys. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here. We had a question if this technique would work on polystyrene ornaments. So probably like, you know, like a foam. If you have a really high density foam that you can paint onto, that'd probably be good. You know, some of those craft foams are kind of rough. So yeah. you probably want to get something nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. But the big thing here that Jesse's using are these paper mache because it really grabs onto that paint. So you probably want to keep with something that's kind of organic like this. Yeah, Dylan is exactly right. Um, so something that's a little bit smoother might be better. If you have something that's got more texture, you could probably seal it with something, I would guess, um, if that's all you've got at home, just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you're using something that's like a slick surface, like I said, mentioned in the beginning, you just want to make sure that you're using multi-surface paint for that. And if you're curious, the difference is these are just our classic acrylic paints, which are really meant for more porous surfaces. So what I mean by that is surfaces that will absorb the paint, like paper mache, paper, canvas, wood, things like that. Whereas um, our multi-surface paints really grab onto different surfaces, including slick surfaces like glass, plastic, metal, things like that. So. If you're planning on painting on something that is a more slick surface, I would recommend using our multi-surface paints for that. There's also a lot of color overlap. So you'll see, yes. you know, folk art has really, really big lines in both our multi-surface and our regular formula. So you can probably use very similar colors, Definitely. if not the exact same color. That's a great point. And even our, um, our acrylic paints work really well in conjunction with our multi-surface paints. Because those are acrylic too, they're just a slightly different formula. So say you're painting glass ornaments and you just, um, you know, you wanted to, you had the Let's Paint Live kit and you didn't want to have to get all new paints, you could just grab some black multi-service paint and base coat your ornaments and then the regular acrylic paints will grab onto that multi-service paint really well. They just might not stick as well to the glass itself. So that's why I recommend base coating and multi-service and then using the acrylics on top of that. We also had a question about someone asking if they could add a picture to one of their ornaments. I think that's a great idea. They yeah. could use Mod Podge. Absolutely. If you have a picture or a printout at home, Dylan's right. You can use Mod Podge. In case you guys didn't know, um, Plaid is not only the maker of amazing folk art paint, we are also the maker of Mod Podge. So all the Mod Podge products, um, you know, there's matte gloss, uh, outdoor, dishwasher safe, Mod Podge Ultra, um, any of those work really great for just like the name says, for Mod Podging, for decoupage. So you can absolutely put a picture on your ornament. I love that idea. Or paint a picture on your ornament. For everyone just joining us, um, Jesse is painting the fresh winter florals ornaments. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip back to the front camera here so you can see on Jesse's right, you've got those really stunning floral ornaments on black. So she is base coating her ornaments and then we're gonna get into the florals if you're just joining us. Yeah. So but the great thing about um, these folk art acrylic paints is that they dry pretty quickly. Um, not so fast that, you know, you have a really short working time. You have a good amount of time to kind of push it around and blend and things like that, but not so slow that it takes forever for them to dry. So by the time we're finished painting our third one, we may need to hit it with a hairdryer a little bit, but our first one will probably be dry so we can go ahead and start painting our florals. So let us know guys if you've used our folk art paints before, I'd love to hear it. If you have our Let's Paint Live kit, I'd love to hear that as well. It's a really, really great um, gift, like I said, if you know somebody who likes to paint or a gift for yourself even, um, it's just a great, great value. You get all of these free classes, which you get them anyway, <laughs> but um, you're able to paint along with all of those free classes using that kit. So it's a really, really excellent Christmas present or any holiday present. Jesse, we just had a question about how long Plaid has been around, and we're coming up on a big anniversary because we're getting company sweatshirts. <laughs> <laughs> we're really excited about it. <laughs> yes, Plaid has been around for 45 years. So Plaid, you know, a lot of our brands have been around even longer, actually. Um, but Plaid itself has been around for a long time. And we have, we make a lot of the brands that you guys probably use in your crafting. So we make folk art paint. We make apple barrel paint. We make Mod Podge. If we have any stitchers out there, we make Bucilla products, so those classic Christmas stockings, we make those as well. 
um, Delta paint. I make, I mean, we, we make a lot of the paints you use and you probably don't even know it. So next time you grab your uh, craft supplies, go ahead and check who the maker is and it might be plaid. And you didn't even know about it. We have so many people painting along. I think Kirsten Jones is painting along hey, with us. Oh, awesome. Thanks for painting along. I can't <laughs> wait to see her ornaments. I know. Me too. I will debut too at the end of this class, Kirsten Jones. You guys probably remember her from a lot of our Let's Paint Live classes. She will be here um, for our first Let's Paint Live of 2022. And she has a beautiful painting she'll be teaching you guys. So I will debut that at the end of this class. So stick around if you're curious about our uh, first painting of next year in January. Okay, so I'm just cleaning off my brush. I've got my ornaments nice and base coated. And I'm looking here, it looks like my first one maybe might need a little bit of hair drying, so I'm just gonna make sure my brush is nice and clean. And then I will hit it with a hair dryer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I need to touch up the bottom a little. I got it a little messy. I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick before I finish drying it. Okay, so my first one is nice and dry, so we can go ahead and start painting our florals. So, um, like I kind of mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to show you all each of the elements that I painted on these florals, because the great thing about this, it's just another one of those where I'm just kind of teaching you a pattern, and I'm going to teach you all the different, um, like I said, elements and motifs that I painted. Now you can kind of be creative and arrange them however you want. You can see on some of these, I have the pattern going all the way around the ornament, which is pretty. On some of them, I have it on just the front side of the ornament, but you can absolutely continue the pattern all the way around. So I'm going to show you um, what I painted on these, and then, you, like I said, you can kind of arrange them on your ornaments however you see fit. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with this one here, and I'm going to try to set this so you guys can see it as I'm painting. Can you guys see it if I set it right there? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to zoom in a bit. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with this one. So I'm going to show you how to paint. I painted this pretty little um, stem with, like, little berries or or little um, buds, and then this pretty green stem here, and then this really pretty little delicate, um, almost like looks like baby's breath, these tiny yellow flowers here. I'm gonna put this here so you guys can see it as, oh, thank you, Dylan. Even better. Okay, so I'm gonna set it right here in this mason jar so you guys have a really good view. Thank you. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna grab my smaller brushes. So we'll primarily be using our number five round brush, but any small round is totally fine for this. So I'm going to start with um, some aqua, just a little bit on my palette. And I'm also going to grab some of my classic green. And then also some of my wicker white. So any white is fine. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit here. I'll tilt it here because I'm going to start with this one here. Do a little bit of mixing. So this stem is going to be kind of a minty color. And to get that color, I'm um, using our Let's Paint Live kit. I'm going to grab a little bit of aqua and just about an even amount of white. We're going to mix that together, and we're looking for a nice light aqua color. So it's a little dark, so I'm going to pick up a little more white. We're doing a little bit of mixing with these uh, florals, which I think is really fun. It just kind of helps you see how many different paintings and different um, themes and you know, subject matter you can paint using our Let's Paint Live kit. The colors, are, there's 24 colors, which is a great variety, but they also mix so beautifully, you can get any color you need out of those 24 colors. Okay, so I think that's good. So whenever I mix with my brush, um, I always like to rinse it before I start painting. And the reason I do that is because you can see here, it's very saturated and it's kind of moppy looking. And if I were to just go ahead and start painting that right now, 
I'd have very little control over the way the paint goes onto my canvas or ornament or whatever I happen to be painting. So I like to get a fresh start by rinsing all that paint out. The reason I do that is because it is clear and it's very saturated and it's kind of blocky in there. So now I have a nice clean brush. I have that nice tip back, that nice sharp point. So I can go ahead and pick up some of my paint. So I'm gonna keep that sharp point. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do that curved stem going up towards the middle. So I'm gonna use the very tip of my brush and I'm barely gonna press down because the great thing about a round brush is you can get really different thicknesses in your lines. So if you press down, you'll get a really wide line, which I'll show you later. And if you um, put very little pressure, you'll get a very thin line. So I'll show you up doing very little pressure. I'm kinda gonna rest my hand on it and do a pulling motion. So you can see I put very little pressure and I got that nice thin line. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna kind of uh, map out all of the stems on here. So I'm gonna start, go with that middle flower and we're gonna kind of do those little stems there. So I'm gonna go a couple inches over. I'm gonna do a line going up. And then this is almost kind of like a tree looking. I'm gonna do some, what looks like little branches going off, kind of like veins in a leaf almost. I'm pulling up just because I like to get that um, loose, you know, pointy, wispy edge at the top. Okay, so that looks good. And now I'm going to go over to the little right one here, and it's gonna kinda match the other one. It's gonna curve up to the left. Make sure I don't put my thumb in my paint. I'm going to pull up to the left. So you see there, we kinda have the two lines pulling up that are curved, and then our little tree shape there in the middle. So we're gonna keep working left to right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush off. I'm gonna go back over to this side. I'm gonna show you how I painted those leaves on our stem there. So I'm actually gonna grab some yellow as well. So I've got daffodil yellow here. And I'm going to mix a little bit of green and a little, here I'll put this in further, and a little scoop of yellow so I get a lighter green. wipe my brush off, and then I'm also gonna mix kind of a, a more aqua green color. So again, I, I really hope you guys get an idea of the kind of variety of colors you can mix using the Let's Paint Live kit. So I'm gonna grab some aqua, and I'm gonna mix some of my green into that, my classic green, to get a nice bluish green. So I got my bright, limey green and my bluish green. Okay, so again, I mix with my brush, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it off. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my bluish green and on this stem here, we're gonna paint each of those leaves. We're gonna start at the bottom. And like I kind of mentioned when I was painting those stems, um, the great thing about a round brush is you can get so many different kinds of lines. So you can get thicker lines by pushing down and thinner lines by putting very um, little pressure on your brush. So we're gonna start by putting um, firm pressure and then lifting up and that's how we'll get those leaf shapes. So we've got our number five round brush and we have mixed some classic green and aqua and I've loaded my brush here and we are playing with the pressure on our round brush a little bit to get these different shaped leaves. So I'll go ahead and I'll continue right where I left off. Oops, had a shaky hand there. So I'm gonna press down and then pull up, press down and pull up. These are very simple little leaves, really easy to do a lot of them really quickly, so great for little ornaments like this, especially if you're planning on doing the pattern all the way around. Press down and pull up. I'm gonna continue this on either side, all the way up. Press down, pull up, press down, pull up. And then I'm just gonna wipe off my paintbrush on my paper towel, I'm not gonna clean it yet. And I'm gonna pick up some of this lime green we mixed. So in case you forgot or in case it dried, like mine kind of did here, um, that was, uh, daffodil yellow with a touch of classic green so you get this bright lime color and we are going to just put some of this while the paint is still wet 
on the top edge of our little leaves there to give it a little bit of a highlight. You can see I'm just doing a little brush stroke right there on the top just to give it a little dimension. So you have really cute little leaves there. Super simple and super easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off. And I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to do these cute little like buds or berries, whatever you'd like them to be. I'm going to grab some baby pink. These are really easy to do. And we, I'm going to grab one of my larger brushes. So um, this is a half inch flat. And the reason I'm doing this is because it really doesn't matter, but you can see the base of the brushes are different sizes. So we're going to use the end of the brush as a stamp. So I want a little bit bigger one for this. So I'm going to dip it in my baby pink. You can see there. And I'm just going to do little circular motions where I want my little buds to be. So I'm kind of swirling it around until you get the size you want. So swirling it, swirling it. You can just dot it if you want a small one, but if you want a bigger one, you can kind of make that swirling motion and you get a bigger shape. So just like that. See, super simple and super easy to do. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. And then we're, we've kind of finished that one. So we're going to move on to the center uh, flower here. So we're going to pick up our smaller brush. And we'll do the same thing we just did, but much tinier. So we're going to paint all these tiny little yellow flowers. It kind of looks like baby's breath to me with our yellow. So I've got the, um, a, a thinner brush here. I've got the end. I'm going to dip it in some daffodil yellow. And I'm going to paint lots of little bunches of flowers. So. I'm kind of going to do it in like groupings of three or four, so look like little, you know, bushels, like little flowers close together. And I'm going to do it all over these stems here so it looks nice and full, like a filler flower in a bouquet. Is everybody able to find us again, Dylan? Yeah, so we're almost all, all the way back to the, awesome. the amount of people we were having. Good. I'm glad you guys are able to find us again. Again, sorry about that. I'm glad you guys are back here for our... December edition of Let's Paint Live. It's one of my favorite of the year. I love painting ornaments with you guys. We love this one because this was my first Let's Paint Live yeah, with Jesse back a few years ago. Yeah, when Dylan first started back here at Plaid, his second time around full time, um, he came to his first Let's Paint Live ever, which was our, um, remember those Buffalo Plaid ornaments we did with the deer silhouette a couple years ago? I'm sure a lot of you guys painted along. That was a really fun one. That's the greatest part about this program. If you guys are just painting these ornaments, we have, I guess, three years worth of mm -hmm. ornaments now. So you can go back. Uh, those initial ones in 2019 were uh, little wood rounds, kind of rustic. And then yeah. Jesse did some really modern ones last year. Mm -hmm. And then these are kind of like a whole new take on them. Yeah, yeah. So like Dylan just mentioned, we've got tons of classes. We have over 50 classes on Plaid Online that you can paint along using our Let's Paint Live kit. And all those classes are absolutely free all the time. So. Make sure you check those out. Okay, guys, so you can see how super simple that was. I just had little bundles. I kind of tried to follow, you know, where the stems were, but I definitely did some in between as well. So you have a nice full little filler flower there. And now we'll move right along to our third little uh, leaf stem here. So for this one, um, if you have any more of that like minty color we mixed, we're going to be using that. If not, go ahead and mix some more. And I'm going to grab my small round brush. I'm going to pick up some of that. I'm actually going to add a little more white, I think. Yeah, a little more white to mine, so it's a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off just because, like I mentioned earlier, whenever I mix with my brush, I like to rinse it off. So I'm going to pick up some of this color here. And we're going to do a very similar technique to the one we did on this side. But instead, we're going to pull in instead of pulling out. And we're going to press down and then pull up. So you can see here, the outside, the outer ends of the leaves are thicker and the inner uh, edges are thinner. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to push down and then pull up. So I got a big leaf. I got a little wonky one there, but you get the idea. So push down and pull up. And I'm going to keep doing this all the way down. Push down, pull up. Push down, pull up. All the way down. Push, pull. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Okay, so a little bit different, similar technique, but you get a really different look from that first stem we did. So now while that paint's still wet, we're going to add a little bit of highlights and such. 
I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I just rinsed my brush off, and I'm going to put a little highlight on the top of each of these, just like we did in our other one. And I'm just going to wipe my brush off my paper towel. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my classic green and do a little tiny line of that just for a little more detail. For everyone who's just uh, rejoining us, this video will live on this page. So if you missed a few minutes kind of getting back into the page, you're, you will have the same amount of content. Jesse didn't paint anything while we were off, off camera. Yeah. I waited for you guys. Don't worry. All right, guys, so that is our first ornament. We're gonna go back at the very end and add a little bit of our treasure gold just to give it a little bit of shine. You can see here on like the berries and stuff. Um, but for, for the most part, this one's done. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our second one. Do we have any questions still? Nope, everybody's just joining still back. Still joining back, yep. awesome. All right. So for our second ornament here, um, it's actually quite similar to what we just did. So on this one, we just painted that third stem of leaves. I did the same thing just going all around. So I'll kind of show you how I lined it up, but um, you really already know how to do this one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I kind of laid it out to get this pretty repeating pattern, um, but the stem itself is just like what I just showed you. So I'll leave this one here so you can look at it. Okay, so I'm going to grab my um, small round brush again. And I'm going to kind of look at the top to lay out um, so I can make sure that I got my spacing of my stems uh, the way I want it. I'm actually going to add a little bit of green to this to make it a little less blue. So I get a little mintier color. And then again, I'm going to rinse it. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of that paint. I don't have a lot because I'm just going to kind of like mark it off for now but I'm gonna kind of go around almost like the face of a clock so I can see where I want each of my stems to be so I don't start painting it, painting it, painting it, and then get to a weird spot where I have to like either try to squeeze one in or there's a big gap. So this way I can kind of get a better uh, overall idea of where my stems will be. So you can kind of see up here what will be kind of lining up. So I'll do one here will be like a big one. Just I'm just doing a little mark so I can place it. And then I'll do a little line across from that and then I'll do, I'll probably do it kind of symmetrically. So I've got four here, kind of a crisscross shape. And then I'll do just some in between. I'll do some a little bit lower in between. So they kind of just nestle right in there. So you guys see, kind of see what I did. I have eight stems overall. I've got four going, you know, kind of across from each other and then lower ones in between each of those. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill out those stems just by dragging them all the way down to the bottom. And just like in the beginning when we were painting our stems, I'm putting very little pressure on my brush so I get that nice, fine line. And I probably won't paint all the leaves on these because like I said, I've already showed you how to do this one. I don't want to bore you guys, um, but I will show you. I will finish spacing it and show you just one more so you guys can have a reminder. Okay, so now I have really nice, evenly spaced um, little branches here. So you can see that was a really easy way to do it. So now I'm going to pick up some more of that paint on the same brush, and just like we did, we're going to start at the top, and we're going to push, pull, push, pull. And we're going to continue this all the way down our stem and around all of the stems that we just painted. So again, a really easy other way to paint these cute little you know, pieces of botanicals and bouquets and florals and things that are so popular and trendy right now. Um, and you know, to do uh, bigger patterns of it really quickly. So this is a great gift for friends. You can make so many of these ornaments at once, kind of just like a little... Um, factory you know you can make these super quick for your friends and everybody loves a handmade gift for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever holiday you're celebrating this time of year.
Yeah, you could easily translate this to a canvas absolutely, or absolutely. gift wrap. Jesse paints a lot of gift wrap yes, around the holidays I do. here I love at Plash. Gift wrap. Yes, I do it at home and around the holidays. So, I mean, this you know this pattern painting works great for any kind of gift, not just ornaments. Keep going, making sure my ornament is nice and full. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add a little highlight. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna have the same color, but I'm gonna add a little more white to lighten it. I'm just going to go back and do a little line at the top of each of those leaves just to give it a little bit of a highlight. So you guys have a really good idea of how I did this one here. And you can see I also added some of those cute little dots. So I always add these little dots. If you guys have painted with me before, you've probably noticed that, um, especially for florals. I love adding these little dots. They're so easy, and they're just really cute little fillers just to make your painting look nice and full and your composition nice and full. So I did a little bit of yellow, and then I just did three dots here and there. Just kind of fill up my ornament and have a really nice full composition. So you can see... Super simple, super easy, and a really cute little ornament. All right, so moving right along, we'll head over to our third ornament, which is our florals. Bring these back up. So this one's a really fun. This is kind of like the centerpiece, in my opinion, of all these ornaments, this really cute grouping of flowers. I'm excited to show you how I did it. So I got my third ornament here. Luckily, I know we had that tech, those technical difficulties. Luckily, it gave us plenty of time for ornaments to dry, so we don't have to do any more hair dryer tonight. So it was a little blessing in disguise, I guess. All right, so for this one, I want to make sure we have all the paints we need on our palette. Um, I've got some baby pink, so we're definitely going to need that. I'm going to grab some more of my wicker white. <coughs> I'm going to actually grab a little more baby pink just to make sure it's nice and fresh on my palette. Um, I've got my classic green and I also have my aqua, so you want to make sure you have those. And I think that's it for this one. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So I'm going to go, go ahead and grab my um, small round brush, just like I mentioned. This is the one we'll be using the most for our tiny little flowers here tonight. And we're going to be using very similar brush strokes that we've been using, just in a different shape. Instead of doing those, you know, long sprigs of greenery, we're doing flowers instead. So I'm going to pick up some of this pink, just a little tiny bit on the tip, and I'm going to place my flower. So I'm going to just do the middles. So I'm going to do one there, and then I want to give myself some room to do all those petals. So I give myself some breathing room, and I'm going to do another one. So this is the side of my flower. A little diagonally down to the left. And then another one kind of below that one. And again, I'm giving myself a good amount of breathing room so I make sure I have lots of room for my petals. Okay, so just like we did for our um, leaves, we're gonna be doing a push-pull motion, but instead of going down, we're gonna go in a circle. So I'll show you what I mean here. So I'll start here. I've got a good amount of paint on my brush, and I wanna end at that dot. So I'm going to push, and then pull, push, and then pull, and I'm pressing down on my brush all the way to get that full width of my brush. Push, pull, push, pull. And depending on how big your round brush is, is kind of how thick your petals will be. If you have a bigger round brush, like say a, you know, an eight or a 10, you're gonna get much bigger petals. If you have a smaller round brush, you're gonna get thinner petals. Push and pull. So you can see, super easy to paint that little flower. I'm going to continue this for all of them. Just pull, push, pull, and another really easy pattern to paint kind of quickly to do, you know, bigger areas. This is a great one. I love that Dylan said for gift wrap because 
this is just something that I would paint on a gift um, for someone. Kind of hard to do around the holidays if you're giving lots of gifts, but um, great for birthdays and things like that. Push pull. Push pull. Push pull. Push pull. Push pull. All right, so we've got our three flowers there. Really, really simple to do. So now I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to add a little bit of highlights to them. So I'm going to grab some of my wicker white. And again, I haven't cleaned my brush up in water. I just wiped it on the paper towel. So I have a little bit of pink in my brush. So I'm going to grab some wicker white. And I'm going to go on the very tips of the uh, flowers. And I'm going to just do a little dabbing motion, pulling down. And what I got is that nice little highlight on the tip. So I'm going to do a little dabbing motion, pulling down. I'm just kind of laying some white in there. Little dabbing motion, pulling inwards, I guess I should say, on each of the petals. And it just gives it a little bit of brightness and a little bit of dimension. Continue this for all of my flowers. If you get a little pink in there, that's good. That's what we're doing while it's still wet. So we can get a little bit of blending going on. So really simple. If you're someone that does a lot of uh, mass production to like mm -hmm. sell or yes. something for craft shows, you know, there's a lot of simple pieces put together to make a really complex looking ornament. Right. Yeah, that's a great idea. I know a lot of you guys do craft shows. This is the time of year for craft shows. I know this weekend and next are when a lot of them are happening and even last month. Um, but this was so easy to mass produce, like Dylan said. If you've got a booth, a craft booth, during some sort of Christmas sale, these are super easy to do. Okay, so I'm actually going to grab a little apple red. I forgot. Just a tiny bit. I don't need much of this. And I'm going to mix a little bit of apple red with my small round brush in daffodil yellow. We're going to get a little bit of an orangey color here. A little more yellow. Kind of like a peachy. Here we go. I'm gonna clean off my brush because I mixed with it. And we're gonna do a little bit of dabbing motion in the center of each of these flowers just to get that little, you know, what's maybe like the stamen or just the center of the flowers there with this little orangey color. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of dabbing just at the tip of my brush. Just dab, dab, dab. To get a kind of an irregular little shape there. We just kind of wanna touch that color in. I'm not really looking for a perfect circle. So we get a nice little texture there too. I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And then we'll go ahead and add some really simple leaves, very similar to the ones that we've already been doing, coming away from our flowers. So I'm gonna start with our nice minty color that we've been using. And I'm gonna do a push-pull motion, just like the very first ones we did. So I'll start here. Push, pull, this is going to be a little bit longer. Push, pull, and I'm going to kind of, you know, note where each of my leaves are. I'll kind of fill in some of that negative space. And by negative space, I mean all of the areas around our flowers. Push, pull. Push, pull. Push, pull. And you can do as many of these as you want, really. All right, so super simple leaf shapes. And now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my aqua. I have not rinsed my brush off. And I'm gonna add a line of that to each of my leaves that we just painted. A little very quick blending here, because it's all still wet. So I'm just gonna wipe my brush off a little bit and pick up some of my classic green and do the same with that. You can see how we got that really nice blended look just because it's still wet, so. Not a lot of work, but really beautiful layered colors. All right, super easy leaves right around there. And now I'll show you too, I have a couple little more elements that I added to this one. I have these cute little uh, yellow flowers coming around it. So again, based on what we've already done, you can probably kind of guess that how I did that, but I'm obviously still gonna show you guys. So I'll start here, you can see a couple of them. So I'm just gonna go around the edges and, and continue filling in some of that negative space. So I'm going to mix some of my green and aqua, because mine dried up a little. And I'm going to rinse my brush off. And do really thin lines.
end again. So I'll start up here. So I'm going to pull up, and this is going to be kind of similar to, um, remember on our first ornament we did this one here? You want those really thin lines kind of like coming out of themselves, almost like branches. So I'm going to do a really thin line here. And then I'm going to do a few coming off of that, kind of like grass almost. I'm going to do a few of these. So I'll do another one over here. Maybe one on top. Okay, so really wispy and thin. And I'll clean my brush off and then we'll go in and add our yellow little flower buds. So I'll add them on each of the ends of these little lines I just made. Now Jesse's doing these in this like pink flower with a green uh, leaf on it, but you could also, like if you really like traditional, super traditional Christmas, this is a pretty, you know, generic leaf or um, uh, flower shape. You could do these in red and make them poinsettias and yeah. just have a bit more of a point on the tip. That's a great idea. All right, guys, so that is it for um, all of our flat colors. And now is my favorite part of any of it when we get to add one of our specialty paints. I love getting to add some glitter or shine at the end. And today that's how we have our treasure gold in rose gold. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna just hang this for just a second well, cause it's still wet. I'm gonna grab my treasure gold here. I'm gonna move my palette around so you can see me pour it out just so you can see how beautiful it is. Especially if you have not used treasure gold before. So again, this is treasure gold. Um, it's also made by Folk Art, and it is the most metallic paint um, that is water-based and non-toxic. So if you guys are familiar with metallic paints, um, the best ones, like the most mirror-like ones, are always kind of smelly. They're usually a solvent-based, like alcohol-based, and I personally don't love using paints like that, especially in my home with my pets around and stuff. I don't like to be breathing it in. So this is water-based, non-toxic, safe, just like the rest of our Folk Art paints. Um, but it is like crazy shiny, so you'll, you'll see when I go to pour it out. It really is like liquid gold. So you can see there, it's already shining. I haven't even painted it on yet. So I'm going to use this to add some accents to my flowers. So you can see here, we've got those shiny areas on our flowers here that really just make them pop. I'm going to show you how I added that. You can see here, they look a little bit, oops, I just knocked my stand over. They look a little bit flat in comparison. They look kind of boring compared to those. So we're gonna go ahead and add that um, beautiful metallic sheen. So how I'm gonna add that um, is by creating some like almost shadows in my yellow, or I'm sorry, in my pink petals. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll pick up some of my rose gold paint on my small round brush and I'll start at the base of each of my petals and I'm gonna pull up, pull away from the center. It's kind of hard to see because it's so shiny. See how I'm adding that there? I'm trying to catch the light so you can see where it's painted. Just very little pressure. Like I said, almost adding some shadow to our leaf or our petals, I mean. And just a reminder to everybody, we did have some connection issues. So there's a first part of this video where Jesse base coats and starts some of the leaf structure on one of the ornaments. And then there's this part and both parts will be on our video section after the stream. So you'll be able to follow along with the whole lesson. Jesse didn't paint anything in between. Yep, I waited for you guys. All right, so you can see here how much that adds to those flowers, isn't that pretty? I just love treasure gold, it's one of my favorite paints to make. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add treasure gold to some of our other designs as well. I don't want that one to be the only one. So we'll go back to our very first ornament here. And just like, you know, we've been doing, you know, I love adding those little circle dots with the end of my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of my treasure gold. I'm gonna add it to my little pink buds here to make those shine. You can even add a few little dots here and there just to add a little bit of Maybe add some in amongst the yellow. A little bit of interest and sheen. So really simple and really easy. You get that pretty shine. And then I'll go back on the um, completely solid one or the covered pattern and we'll add that as well. So of course I didn't finish it all because I don't want to bore you, but 
I'm going to add some more of these cute little dots with my treasure gold, just like we did with the yellow. Just some little groupings of these cute dots. All right. So that is it for our uh, December 2021 ornaments. Um, I hope you guys had so much fun painting with me. I just want to remind you guys that, like Dylan said, we had some tech technical difficulties. So the first part of the video is also here on Facebook, but then this was the second part of the video. I'm glad you're able to find us again, and I'm sorry about that. Um, tonight we used our Let's Paint Live kit, which is an awesome kit of 24 beautiful folk art colors. And with that kit, you can paint any of the Let's Paint Live paintings in our library. So you can go to plaidonline.com or on our YouTube channel, Plaid Crafts, and you can see over 50 free videos we have done using this kit. So the kit is available on plaidonline.com and on amazon.com, so make sure to check that out. Um, I had so much fun painting with you. Oh, should we get Kirsten's painting? Dylan's gonna grab Kirsten's painting, so next, uh, I almost said next year, it is next year. <laughs> um, next month for January, we have a brand new uh, set of paintings for you guys. We're so excited to show you what we'll be doing next year. But in January, to be the first week of January, we'll be right here in the same place at 7.30, the first Thursday of January. Um, but Kirsten Jones will be here, and she'll be teaching you a beautiful painting that she has named Winter Forest. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. It's a really great painting for the start of the year. But this is it. So make sure to check that out. Again, it's the first Thursday of January. Um, so Kirsten Jones will be right here, again, same time, same place, in the studio teaching you Winter Forest. This, just like all of our paintings, we'll be using our Let's Paint Live kit, so make sure to check that out before the holidays, um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. Bye.